Hello everyone. I needed somewhere quiet to open this. What's my address on this side? This box. So I chose my bathroom. So I'm sitting in my bathroom. So there's a little bit of echo. That's why. But as I'm opening this, I will explain. Also, my hands are dirty because I was just taking care of some isopods. Okay, so I will explain why I have a reptile in the mail today. And basically, in July, I saw, or I'm not sure if I was tagged in or if someone sent it to me in DMs, but I became aware of this pet-only gecko in need of rehoming from a breeder, which happens like pretty regularly. Like Aegon, for example, was my last leopard gecko. I welcomed home in January. And in December, the breeder had reached out to me saying I have this gecko with white and yellow syndrome. So like, it's pretty common that people reach out, especially if it's like a special needs type of gecko. Back in July, when I reached out, I had said, if you're unable to find a home for the gecko, I'd be happy to take her. Fortunately, someone else was willing to at the time. So I was like, okay, great. And so, I made a post on Instagram just a couple weeks ago. Maybe it was like beginning of September, I'm not sure. But I had said like Aegon had been my last leopard gecko for a long time and probably would be. Go figure as soon as I say that. Then I'm reached back out to by the person and they say that the person who was supposed to take in this gecko backed out because they had to pay for shipping. Like they were only asking this person to pay for shipping and they didn't want to pay for shipping, which I think is pretty indicative like that's a problem if you're taking on a special needs gecko and the only thing you have to pay for is shipping which is, is fair like i i would not have felt comfortable paying a price for her if that makes sense or maybe just a small rehoming fee but i only paid shipping for her but the thing is if a person is taking on a special needs reptile and they don't even want to pay the shipping cost like that doesn't fare well for how they're going to care for them so probably for the best that it didn't work out but then the breeder reached back out to me and was like you know I still have her uh the person backed out do you want to take her and I was like sure of course absolutely not gonna say no um so I I have already like planned out my leopard gecko upgrades and I had a spot available so it just so happened that I was able to take her in she is a pet only and also kind of special needs because she was born with a uh, issues from an incubation fluctuation. So basically what happened was the temperatures fluctuated while she was incubating. This does happen. It's not like a super common occurrence, but it's also not a super rare occurrence. Like it, it just happens. In the incubator, when the temperature fluctuates, it can cause deformities or defects in the leopard gecko. And so what it caused for her was like one smaller eye it looks like she has a little bit of extra skin around her neck which is super common like what i've noticed from geckos who have defects or disabilities from incubation issues or actually just disabilities and defects in general that they're born with so congenital ones but basically it's always something with their eyes something with like their tail being too short their legs being too short or they have extra skin. Like that is always, always the case. Some of the more rare ones I've seen have been like Rago having his double cleft nostrils, but yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty common. And so she got one small eye, kind of like Torment and Egret and Meraxes. And then she also has a little bit of extra skin like Rago and like Tyrion, who also have some congenital birth defects. And then she also has one leg that's like a bit shorter and the skin looks webbed on that leg, which I imagine is part of the reason why it's shorter and she has some mobility issues with that leg. And then she's also missing a toe on that leg. So she's got a little bit of everything going on. Now, as is the case with most pet onlys, the full genetics are not disclosed. So please don't expect me to be disclosing that to you. Again, this issue is not related to her genetics. Oh, this sound. Ugh. I hate the sound of stuff rubbing against styrofoam. I'm going to do this as quick as possible. Oh my god! You're so little! Oh my goodness! So she was born... Oh my god, she's so cute! She looks like Tormund! Hello, queen! Oh my god, I think her small. I might be even smaller than Tormund's. Okay, so let me just give you a little look her face do you see that Let me, i'm gonna put a picture of Tormund right here this is this is Tormund's sister relative cousin i don't know ancestor 
can't be ancestor. They're both alive at the same time. You get what I'm saying? They look alike. You're so little. Well, I'm glad I chose the enclosure I chose for you then. So I, I chose uh, when she's not in quarantine, of course. She'll be in a 24 by 18 by 12 without substrate, as a lot of my special needs geckos are in those type of setups. And the reason I went with a 24, sorry, honey. The reason I went with a 24 by 18 by 12 is because I, she has documented mobility issues. And so, of course, I didn't want to give her too much space and get stressed out. But, you know, over time, if I see that she would do better with a bigger space, she'll get a bigger space. I know, honey, I'm so sorry. My goodness. She has a little paradox spot on her back, just like Tormund. Oh, my God. So when it comes to naming her, I have been struggling big time. I wanted to originally call her Davos because in Game of Thrones... Davos has, um, he's missing one finger and so is she, but I really don't know. Honestly, that's probably the one I'll go with just for the fact that Tormund is also a girl who looks like her and has a boy's name, so. Oh, this is gonna be loud. Sorry, 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 sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry, I don't mean to alarm you. Hello, queen. Okay, so, oh my gosh, you're so precious. Okay, so this is her. She's very cute. She does have a little bit of extra skin. It's not so bad around her neck. I know, I'm sorry. This must have been so stressful for you. Don't worry, we'll get you in an enclosure soon and you won't even have to worry about it. I know, I'm so sorry. I already have her quarantine enclosure set up. Basically what it is, is 10 gallons with a screen top, um, two hides, a cold hide, a hot hide, also a, hu a humid hide. So just like a Tupperware container with newspaper, I'm sorry, paper towel that's wet. Um, and then she has a calcium dish and a water dish. And then tonight, uh, I will give her a food dish, and then we'll see if she'll take food off Taz. I know. Oh, I know. I touched her. She's like, eh, excuse me, human. I know. I'm sorry I'm not showing her that much. I don't want to, like... Yeah, okay. I see, I see. She definitely struggles to move around with that front leg. It's, like, up higher. I know, honey. Come here. Oh, it's okay. It's all right. Here. It's okay. I'll show you guys here in a second. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. I know, I know. It's considerably shorter. Okay, so you can see here's this this leg right here. Oh my god, you're so little. Oh my goodness, you're just like a wee baby. You're just like, um... Okay, and the way she moves her hand is interesting too. So she kind of bends it like this instead of flattening it out like this. Are you gonna get warmed up on my hand? She's a little bit cold. She's like, ah, yes, give me some of your heat, human. So cute, so little. I've never actually done a leopard gecko unboxing that's just an unboxing on my channel, so that's pretty exciting. Usually I do like, at the beginning of a welcome home video, I'll do an unboxing and then I'll show clips of them eating and settling in. You have a bit of a head tilt too, is that because of your eye? Hmm? Does the world just look a little bit better with your head tilted because you got one little eye? Yeah. Oh my God, so cute. I don't know how people don't like leopard geckos, man. I really don't. Oh my God, I'm about to cry. I don't know why. I'm very emotional lately. Like I, I've said this in another video, but going through some personal things and uh, including like, you know, a devastating breakup, but um, like I'm just very emotional lately and I don't sleep well, so. But yeah, I'm definitely about to tear up at this because she's so cute. And she reminds me so much of Tormund and I love, of course I love all my geckos, don't get me wrong, but I love Tormund. You're just like a little Tormund mini, like a 2.0 Tormund. And instead of having a neurological issue, you have a short leg, which impairs your mobility. I know, you're just absorbing this warmth, huh? Oh my gosh, she's so cute. I'm literally, every time I look at her, I want to start crying. I know, it was such a journey you had. I think she came all the way from Vegas. So one thing that I do whenever I welcome home a gecko or any animal is I have this map of the United States, like a cork map. Um, it's just like state outlines. And I put a little pin where the animal came from. So it's like, I can always remember that they came from somewhere before they came to me. So I'll add hers on camera so you can see. I already have a couple geckos from Vegas though. So like from different people. So there's gonna be like a little, maybe like three of them when I add hers. I know you just had such an exciting journey. 
Such a long journey. I think you went to two airports because when I was watching her tracking information last night, she went from uh, Vegas, I think it was Vegas, Vegas to Tennessee, Tennessee to Indiana, and then she had the drive up to me. Yes, you did. Oh my God, you're so pretty. And your eyes look a lot like Tormund's too. She's more orange than Tormund though. Tormund has a bit more yellow. She has a bit more orange. Her carrot tail is really nice. Yeah, you're so pretty. Oh my gosh. I can see your arm got stuck. It's okay. Here. So let's see if I can show you how she walks. See how she just kind of drags her foot a bit? It, the foot doesn't like open up all the way. And when she lifts it, it doesn't lift up. So she just kind of pulls it forward. That's all right. Everybody's different. Oh, I'm so sorry. I hit your tail. I didn't mean to. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just putting this here so you don't fall. She does have a head tilt too. It's okay. It's all right. I'm going to give her a couple more minutes here to like acclimate to like the temperature of the house and my hand and whatnot. And then I'm going to move her into her enclosure where she can get acclimated. And that'll be the end of the video because like I said, this is going to be just an unboxing, which I've never really done before. I usually do like an unboxing and then a, like how they're settling in and yada yada. Or at least I used to back in the day do unboxing video or welcome home videos like that. That's not going to focus on her, but she's so cute. It's okay, I'm just turning you around. Don't fall, don't fall. It's okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. She's so cute. So it says her birthday is March 30th, 2020. You were born in quite a year, my dear. I think Aegon was also born in 2020. Yeah, you guys, you and Aegon, y'all were born in a tough year. Tough year. Did anyone see that um, trailer for The House of the Dragon, that new Game of Thrones series coming out? I don't really know if I'm gonna be... I know I'll probably be excited and like I'll probably like it but I'm going into it all the way until the series finale like however many years from now I'm going into it with some reservations like I'm afraid of Game of Thrones 2.0 happening where I'm so invested in it that I name all 32 of my leopard geckos after Game of Thrones characters just for them to completely bungle the series finale and emotionally I'm, I'm still not over it so like It'll be interesting to see, oh, it's okay, I gotcha. It'll be interesting to see uh, if the show is good, but I'm gonna wait and hold my reservations until the series ends because I'm not gonna get tricked again. Nope. Fool me once, yes, fine, okay. Fool me twice, that one's on me. So no, I'm not, I'm not gonna, not gonna be uh, happy about it. I am excited to have more names to name my geckos after. Like some of the geckos have names that are from the Game of Thrones books and not from the shows. Or some of them have names that are characters in the show but not in the books. So um, it'll be interesting to see some like new faces associated with names I already know. And then also getting to see characters who like I have no idea of. And also getting to see characters that the you know, HBO like makes up on their own. Well, we're gonna have to think of a name for her. And I, I announced her early on Patreon, which by the way, if you wanna support me on Patreon, I appreciate it. If you don't wanna support me on Patreon, but you still wanna support me in a way that's like Patreon, I did open my YouTube members. Like if you just look at the bottom of the screen, like right beneath the video, it'll say join. And you can click on that. And for, I think it's $1.99 and $4.99. Those are the two tiers, but You'll get different like rewards of like watching videos early, getting a discount to merch, getting to see animals before they arrive, helping me pick names, getting to see enclosure builds before they're shown anywhere else, like those sort of things. But you know, you can do Patreon or you can do members. I have both open because I know some people just don't use Patreon, but I think people actually prefer Patreon because when I announced it in my video last week, I got no members, but a bunch of new patrons. Maybe there was like some confusion. Of my, about my announcement which is probably on my end but we will need a name for her and I asked my people on patreon and every single person picked something different because I had listed like four or five names there and everyone picked something different and I don't know 
So some of the options that I listed are Catelyn, like Catelyn Stark, I'm gonna call her Cat. And um, there's, like I said, Davos, because Davos only has one finger and she's missing, or Davos is missing a finger and so is she. And then I also have um, Yara listed. I also have Sansa listed. However, Sansa is a gecko that I actually had a long, long time ago, back when I got Arya. Arya and Sansa were both rescues. Arya was in real tough shape after a couple months and Sansa passed away after a couple months. Unfortunately, Arya was able to recover. Um, Sansa, like I said, passed away. Um, so I've never named a gecko Sansa again because obviously I already had one. But I've always wanted to reuse the name because I didn't get to have her that long. So I thought maybe, but no, I, I don't know. I think I'll probably not use Sansa. I don't know. I look at her and I really, I really don't know. I wish Torment had like a sibling in the show and I could be like, just put the name on this one. And the last gecko that I got that had like one small eye other than Meraxes, like right after Torment, not right after Torment, like exactly a year after Torment, I got a gecko that had one small eye. And so I named her Egret because Torment and Egret were, were friends. They're both gingers. And, um, but now I feel like Egret would have worked better for her. That's the problem. I never know what the future holds. So if I pick a name, it might not work as well for one gecko as it does for another, but I can't know that for sure. Yeah, this one leg is just a little bum, huh? Just a little short leg. I wonder how she does shedding that foot. That is curious to me because there's no stuck shed or anything on it. And there wasn't any description of like shedding being an issue, but it's like a tiny little spot on that toe. Could be that like where she sheds, maybe she bites the toe. Some of the other geckos do that. Okay, looks like you're warming up. We're gonna, I'm gonna go put her in her temporary enclosure and her quarantine enclosure where she'll be for the next few weeks. Um, and it probably will be actually longer than that as I work on leopard gecko upgrades. But she's not gonna mind, she's, she's tiny. She's just gonna chill. <laughs> so thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please like, subscribe, comment, hit the notification bell, all the good stuff. And this little nameless lady who I, I don't imagine she'll be nameless for long because I want something to call her. But if you have uh, any ideas, Game of Thrones related, uh, by the way, I have 32 geckos, so I've used a lot of names already. But, um, you know, if you're familiar with my geckos and you have a name suggestion that I haven't already used, please go ahead and recommend it for this adorable baby who looks just like Tormund. <laughs> oh my god, I'm gonna cry again. Just looking at her is so cute. What the hell? I swear to god, every day that I get older, I get more sensitive on this, this earth hellscape. Anyways, <laughs> goodbye. I'll see you guys in the next one. Say goodbye, little no-name. Don't worry, you'll have a name soon.